A very good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight on BTV Major News at 6. Reaching you live from Edo State, Benin City, the Edo State Capital. My name is Ulu Atoy Oyedola. Ahead of the forthcoming Edo and Ondo governorship election, the chairman, Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has urged security agencies to leverage on the success of the previous election in both states. Yakubu stated this at a meeting of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security in Abuja. The ANEC boss explained the need to determine the number of personnel and other assets to be deployed to strategic locations early enough. BTV News best orator has the details. The INEC chairman pointed out that the proactive approach led to the successful conduct of the last governorship election in Edo State on 19 September 2020 and in Ondo State on 10 October 2020. He therefore urged all parties involved to ensure the 2024 governorship elections in Edo and Ondo States are an improvement on the success story of the last elections. It is important to start security preparations early. In particular, the number of personnel and other assets to be deployed to strategic locations should be determined and mobilized early enough. It was this proactive approach that led to the successful conduct of the last governorship election in Edo State on 19th September 2020 and in Ondo State on 10th October 2020. There are no security incidents Materials were deployed promptly, logistics deployed smoothly, polling units opened on time, voters attended to efficiently, and results collated and announced transparently. Let us replicate the successful conduct of the last governorship election in Edo and Ondo states. In fact, working together, we should ensure that the 2024 governorship elections in Edo and Ondo states an improvement on the success story of 2020. In the next few months, there will be further engagement with the security agencies and other members of excess at both national and state level. We look forward to your plans to secure the environment without which INEC cannot successfully conduct elections. The Edo State Governorship Poll is scheduled to take place on September 21, 2024, and the Ondo Governorship Poll will be held on November 16, 2024. According to the Independent National Electoral Commission, only 12 parties have uploaded the particulars of their candidates to INEC quarter, with only hours left to the deadline ahead of the Edo Poll. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has cautioned media organizations against fake news and misleading reports ahead of the Edo and Ondo governorship elections. Yakubu gave the caution in Abuja during a consultative meeting with the media. He urged the media and the public to scrutinize the bio data and credentials of the candidates when published as provided by law. BTV News Tosi to Luwaloju has the details. The INEC chairman urged media organizations to engage with political parties as well as their aspirants and report on the primaries with the same diligence and depth they report the main election conducted by INEC. INEC boss further assures that the commission will continue to collaborate with the media on the activities of the electoral body. Important reality in today's age of information technology is the spread of fake news and misinformation instantly and on a global scale. As I said on many occasions, INEC does not believe in censorship. The best antidote to fake news is greater openness and transparency. It is in furtherance of this policy that the Commission interfaces regularly with stakeholders through our regular consultative meetings. We appreciate our partnership with the media and I want to reassure you that INEC will continue to work very closely indeed with you. In the remark, the president of Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ, Chris Isoguzo, says the media would continue to uphold the sanctity of the ballot and safeguard the democratic aspirations of the citizens. He promised that the NUJ will continue to support INEC through accurate reportage of its activities to assist the electorate in making informed decisions. Together, we must uphold the sanctity of the ballot box.
and safeguard the democratic aspirations of our nation. It is hoped that our collective efforts would pave the way for a brighter, more prosperous future for all Nigerians. The Independence National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it will publish the personal particulars of the candidates in form of EC9 for their dual state governorship election on the 31st of this month as required by law. For the undo governorship election scheduled for 16th of November 2024, Professor Yakubu said political parties are expected to commence the conduct of primaries in the next two weeks. Tosin to Luwa Loju, reporting for BTV News. In fulfillment of his pledge to create a new security architecture to secure mining sites, the Minister of Solid Min Minerals Development, Dele Alake, has charged the 2,220 strong mines Mashal tagged Hayakim Kogo to smoke out illegal miners and all those who flout the nation's mining laws. Formerly receiving the marshals drawn from the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSTDC, from the Commandant General, Abubakar Aoudi, representing the Minister of Interior, Honorable Olubu Mitsunji Ojo, Alake charged the new operatives to stem theft and all nefarious activities around the nation's mineral resources so that the nation can reap maximum benefits from its God-given resources. Let's join Best Orator for more. It will be recorded that as a result of the efforts of the Presidential Interministerial Committee on Securing Natural Resources, chaired by Dr. Alake, the Minister of Interior, Honorable Lubumi Ojo, a few weeks ago, launched the NSCDC-led Mines Masha, which represents the first layer of the new security architecture to secure the mining environment. Alake disclosed that talks are run with the Ministry of Police Affairs to boost the Masha with more men, with a command structure spread across the 30 states and the FCT. Today's event of launching and formally handing over the civil defense structure to engage illegal miners and sanitize our mining environment was also part of the, what we conceived at the interministerial committee level. I am very, very happy to let the public know that we did say at the onset that we are going to tackle insecurity in this sector. And the first batch of the security apparatus that we are using in this sector is what we are launching here today. In his remarks, NSCDC Commandant General Abubakar Audu stated that the new mines masha will give wave to the core's mandate of protecting national assets and infrastructure in which solid minerals is a major component. Audu revealed that the mashas will liaise with mine inspectorate in states to garner intelligence and take directives from the ministry for effective execution of its mandate. Called, uh, they call them mining mashas, transport and mining mashas, with an operational court. There's a personal code name called Hired in Kogo. Hired in Kogo. All those illegal miners who are hiding, who smoke them out. The country have realized that we are losing a very huge amount of revenues from the mining industry. And so the squad uh, is here, and this same squad is going to be replicated. In fact, they are ready, they have just by the time we hand over to our brother here, uh, we will now give instruction that we will liaise with all uh, the state uh, arm of the Solid Minerals uh, Department uh, Ministry so that we replicate the same squad. A chairman House of Representatives Committee on Solid Minerals, Honorable Jonathan Befui, who graced the occasion, expressed satisfaction with the new security outfit, noting that with improved security around mining areas, Nigeria's economic fortune is bound for a forward leap. Excited today, Honorable Minister, because today Nigeria can finally sleep with two eyes closed, knowing that 
with what you have been able to achieve here today, our economic fortunes are going to change in no distant time. One of the greatest challenges we've been having as a nation is the fact that our solid minerals have not only been illegally mined, but more than that, they've been illegally smuggled out without us getting true value for that gift or those gifts that God he further reassures the House of Representatives Committee to support the solid mineral development in achieving its goal. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. The Minister of Works, David Umai, has stated that the federal government has put plans in place to complete the construction of the Benin Lokoja Road project within six months. The minister stated this in, on Thursday in Abuja during a meeting with the contractors handling the road project. It was gathered that the senator representing Ado North Senatorial District, Adam Toshumule, and the All Progressive Congress governorship candidates in Ado State, Senator Mondi Okwebulu, who is currently representing Ado Central Senatorial District, were also at the meeting. BTV News' best orator has the details. The Minister of Work, Dave Umai, said that the federal government had devised means to hasten the completion of the road project, which was awarded since 2012, but could not be completed. He disclosed that the federal government had agreed to Boa's commitment to construct 30 kilometers of the road under the credit tax scheme, after which a tax certificate would be awarded to the company. The minister added that three other contractors would be mobilized for the construction of the remaining 30 kilometers. Engineer Umai stated that four contractors would handle the four sessions of the road. The first session from Lokoja is been handled by CGC, the second session is being handled by Modacat, the third by Dantata, while the last section is handled by ROCC. The minister gave a brief history of the project, stating that it was first awarded in 2012, where the last administration later reviewed the project to 879 billion naira under the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Tax Credit Scheme. However, he added that the cost of the project is different from the commitment of NNPC because NNPC's commitment was just 122 billion naira, and so there was was a funding gap of 775 billion era and he did not see where that money was coming from. I just came back from the road and we had a number of agreements. The minister revealed that all he did when he came on board was to keep the project but review the texture of the pavement by allowing the existing carriageway to be asphalt and then review the new carriageway to be concrete. Umai said that the ministry would mobilize the contractors after signing an addendum to collect 30% fund to fast track the project amounting to 9 billion naira each. He however said that the contractors would do an affidavit agreeing on the timing for completion of the project and that the Ministry of Work is very serious about the timing of the project and appealed to the contractors to be diligent and committed working according to the timetable. The stake here is the uh, road from Lokoja down to today where we have four sections. Responding, Mr. Kabiru Rabiu, Group Executive Director, Boa Group, said the company was committed to supporting the administration of President Bola Tinubu to succeed. According to Rabiu, in Edo alone, Boa made an investment of over $2 billion with five lanes of cement. He said that the construction of the 30 kilometers road was also in favor of the group, as well as the people of Edo, and added that the company is committed to make the necessary investment under the tax credit scheme in return for a tax certificate. Well, you know, to make the necessary investment under the tax credit, you know, this is money that why he is, you know, putting, you know, to do this road. Earlier, Senator representing Edo North Senatorial District, Senator Comrade Adams Eric Ushamale, commended President Bola Tinubu led administration for responding swiftly to the needs of the people. According to Senator Ushamale, Edo State residents had been lamenting over the deplorable state of the road for the past two to three administrations. He said that some of the contractors were not serious with the project, while some totally abandoned it. Senator Ushamale said several appeals were made to previous governments who made promises but were not kept. So they cried to the president and that they are happy that through the intervention of the minister, the president has given them a listening ear. Senator Shomole stated that he was shocked that within 72 hours, the minister swung to action. The problem that the ministers before him could not solve got a swift answer. We are happy that through the person of the role minister, the president has given us a listening ear. On his part, the senator representing Edo Central Senatorial District and APC governorship candidate, Senator Mondi Okbaiwulu, said President Tinubu succeeded in reclaiming hope in the people of Edo through the road project. He added that if this is how Nigeria works, everybody will want to come back home and that nobody will want to leave the country and that it is an excellent move for Edo people. I'm happy that 
this is done, it's an excellent uh, move for a few people. Senator Modi Okpawulu concluded by saying that with the project another laudable initiative of President Bola Tinubu, the APC will win the governorship election in Edo State in clean slates. Best orator reporting for BTV News. Governor Alex Boti of Abia State Wednesday flagged off the reconstruction of the long abandoned 30 kilometer Arochuku in the Okereke Ozwabam Road. The road is the shortest route to Arochuku from the capital city of Imwaya via the agrarian Abam communities, coming just weeks after work began on the 67 kilometer Umwaya Uzwakoli Ohafia Road. Ortiz said the clear message is that no part of the state shall be left behind, and his administration pushed to expand the frontiers of economic and social opportunities for individuals, families, and businesses. BTV News Regina Ujomo has more. The governor said gross negligence of economically viable roads in the state by previous administration had made the state lose more investors. He said the cost of neglect on the economy of the state in terms of lost properties cannot be quantified. As farmers in rural communities find it difficult to move their produce to the market, leading to heavy post-harvest loss. The governor noted that most painfully is that businessmen and women from different parts of Nigeria and West African sub-region who had relied on markets in Aba for supplies quickly took their patronage to other places. He said that this administration deliberately resolved to prioritize road rehabilitation as a way to revive the economy of the state. In our push to expand the frontiers of economic and social opportunity for individuals, families, and businesses, to bring relief to our people and reclaim what had been lost through years of neglect, we have gone for quality contractors who share a vision to deliver roads that can stand the test of time and the elements. Governor Oti said as a government that made a covenant to bring Sukhol to the people, after many years of frustration, he knew that the road construction, rehabilitation and maintenance must be made major priority long before he took oath of office. Our overarching objective is to turn every community in the state into viable production centers where those who seek jobs can find one and those who dream of setting up their independent empires will be given wings to fly so from time to time you will see us in your community flagging off new or commissioning completed projects some locals applauded governor oti for coming to their rescue and pleaded their continued support for his administration they co after the completion of this road they, it will shorten the journey from here to mahia to Aba and also to those who are going beyond the mentioned places. We produce uh, cassava, yam. If this road is constructed now, it will help us so much. Since 12 years now, nothing has been done in, on this road. But with this eight months he has stayed in the office, there's something happening now and we're happy about it. A lot of agricultural establishments abide on this road up to Abam and beyond. And we are happy that the governor took it upon himself to make sure that this road the Arochuku Ndi Okereke Ozuambam Road will, on completion in about 12 months, revive the agricultural and aligned business ecosystem within several communities in the Arochuku and Ohafia local government areas and open an extended economic window for those seeking to tap into the promise of the new ABA by investing here. Regina Ujomo reporting for BTV News. The defense headquarters has declared that no fewer than 97 persons are wanted. The wanted persons include terrorists and insurgents, among others who are behind violent crimes in the country. The defense major op media operations major general Edward Buba released the names and pictures of those declared wanted on Friday. Unlike in November 2022, when the military declared no fewer than 19 bandit leaders wanted with a bounty of 5 million naira on each of them to encourage Nigerians to volunteer information that could lead to their arrest. This time around, no bounty was placed on the 97 persons declared wanted. The names and pictures contain terrorists from the northeast and northwest 
as well as insurgents in the southeast and north central. A total of 43 persons were declared wanted in northwest zone ravaged by banditry. In the northeast, ravaged by Boko Haram and Islamic State for West Africa province terrorists, 33 persons were declared wanted. Also, a total of 21 insurgents and violent criminals were declared wanted in the southeast and north central area. Tinubu on Friday urged Nigerians to patronize made in Nigeria products and services to sustain the recent gains of the Naira in the foreign exchange market. He said the recent appreciation of the value of the Naira against the dollar does not spell Uhuru yet. Therefore, he called for more collaboration from citizens who will be urged to blow the whistle on persons seen engaging in practices that undermine the local currency. The report. Special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Ajuri Ingelale, disclosed these two journalists when he delivered Tinubu's message at the State House briefing on Friday. He said upon assuming office 10 months ago, the Tinubu administration discontinued subsidies on patrol, which he said would save the government monies for infrastructural expansion. He also unified the foreign exchange rates to curb currency arbitrage. However, these moves sparked collateral instability in the value of the Naira and heaped hardship on Nigeria as food prices soared. In February 2024, 1,900 was exchanged for one U.S. dollar in the black market. The Naira has recently seen a steady climb against the U.S. dollar, exchanging 1,382 Naira per dollar at the official market on Thursday. He noted that while the administration is poised to arrive at a new minimum wage states can afford, it also wants its pegged at a number that is sustainable over a number of years, based on the long-term stability that we want to bring to the Nigerian Naira with the interventions we're presently making. Tinubu wants to communicate very clearly to our people that there has never been a more important time in our history to actively agree together that we will patronize and purchase made in Nigeria products across all value chains, across all sectors. There is an intentionality that we must have on this issue, that we want a strong currency. We want the spending power of our people to go up. We want every Naira and Kobo we earn to be more valuable, not just here, uh, but when we travel abroad. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, is going to ensure that our micro, small, and medium scale enterprises in the country have what they need uh, to get through this difficult period, which is why he has approved the presidential conditional grant scheme in which over one million Nigerian businesses uh, will be empowered uh, with conditional grants. This is money they will not have to pay back of up to 50,000 Naira uh, per, per nano enterprise. Uh, with over 1,000 nano enterprises being uh, selected uh, and granted these funds uh, within each and every local government area of the Federation. One million nano enterprises. In addition to that, over 150 billion Naira uh, has, is being dispersed uh, from the Bank of Industry and Smedan uh, on single-digit interest rate loans uh, of up to 2 million Naira uh, to hundreds of thousands of uh, small and medium-scale enterprises across all local government areas of the Federation. Meanwhile, Ingelale explained that the federal government expects to save 5 billion Naira quarterly by imposing a strict three-month ban on all publicly funded foreign trips for ministers, heads of government, agencies and other officials. In a letter dated March 2nd, 2024, from the Office of the President's Chief of Staff, Tinubu imposed a three-month ban on all official foreign trips for heads of ministries, departments and agencies beginning April 1st, 2024. The letter explained that the aim is to reduce the rising expenses incurred by ministries, departments and agencies on international travel and ensure that cabinet members and heads of MDAs focus on their respective mandates for effective service delivery. Olua Toye Oyedola reporting for BTV News. Dr. Bright Ednabulele, governorship candidate of the Accord Party in the forthcoming Ado election, has promised to liberate the state in every area and to ensure that people are happy. Dr. Bright Ednabulele stated this when he was received by a crowd of supporters at the Benin Airport this Saturday. BTV News Best Orator has the report. <laughs> supporter 
that's in Edo State, in their numbers, received the governorship candidate of the party, Dr. Bright in Abulele, at the Bini Airport with huge applause. Speaking with newsmen, the governorship candidate of the party, Dr. Bright in Abulele, said he is in the gubernatorial race to bring transformation to Edo State and provide a business friendly environment for investors so that the state can thrive. Edo, Niresi, Kinirowa, Allow that or can go around. I'm a dollar, do you? dollar. Economic emancipation for our brothers and sisters. And uh, a door of 4.5 million people, there's no one, everybody's inclusive. Change belongs to all of us. And we're here to bring change. Both the market, both our children, our sons and daughters, we're all inclusive. Like I said again, it's a liberation for our people. Economic emancipation. It's, it's, it's time for a door to move forward. Dr. Bright and Abulele, who said he will unveil his manifesto as soon as campaign begins, according to the guidelines provided by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, further said that he has come with his wealth of experience to reposition the state for the better. Well, this is not a campaign. We are not campaigning. My people are happy to welcome me home after many years because they believe that uh, Edo is for all of us and Edo requires change. We are here to bring change. The chairman of our court party in Edo State, Ambassador Moregbe Joseph, and a civil society activist and member of our court party, Eda Cortis Ubo, appreciated the people for the warm reception and said our court party is here to stay and ready for the upcoming election. He has, he has been a representative of the, of the black race in America. We needed him to come home to add value to what we are seeing right now. Politics will come, but his coming is to touch home and touch home base with his people to tell the people that there's nothing that cannot be done. Everything is possible when we follow it systematically. He has come here now to show that he has the interest of the people at heart. Let, first of all, let me see the faces of these people so that that is where blessings set him. The name of our gubernatorial candidate to Edo State, you know, Edo 2024, our court party just want to let them know that uh, we are here to win election. We are not here to play. We are here to win election. The Accord Party candidate Dr. Bright in Abulele thereafter visited the party secretariat at Second East Secular Road for a strategic meeting with, with units, ward, and local government leaders. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. Now, the Chief Judge of Edo State, Honorable Justice Daniel Iyobosa Okumboa, has set up a seven man committee to investigate the allegations contained in the impeachment notice against the Deputy Governor of Edo State, Right Honorable Philip Shaibu, in line with Section 188, Subsection 5 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. In a memo signed by the Chief Registrar, Barrister B. O. Sawaru, the seven-man committee will be chaired by Honorable Justice S. A. Omonua. The members of the committee are Professor Violet, Violet, I Bokaibu, Professor Boniface Onomio Edegbae, Professor Theresa Akwogube, Mr. Ogogo Ayodele Oviasu, Surveyor Dr. Andrew Olia, and Mr. Idris Abdul Karim. As the Edo gubernatorial election approaches, Edo people have started to share their views on the credibility of Dr. Aswe Igodalu who is the candidate of PDP, Senator Monde Okwebolo, the governorship candidate of APC, and Barrister Olumide Akwata, candidate of Labour Party, emerging, emphasizing the need of the good people of those states to throw their weights behind the candidates that can elevate the sufferings of the people. The report is presented by Seth Okgaifo. Though most of the citizens admitted that all the candidates are qualified, they however stated their favorite candidate, who they believe we have an added advantage in clinching the gubernatorial seat. A pastor who spoke with BTV News appealed to the people of Edo State to give Dr. Aswaigo Dalo an opportunity to govern the state, as he believes he is capable of alleviating the hardship in the state. Another respondent was of the view that since the current administration of Governor Godin Obaseki has not eradicated poverty from the land, there is the need for Edo State to support a competent candidate from any of the two other political parties. We chose them for them to speak for us. We chose them for them to be the people's 
mouthpiece. So I pray whichever person party that won the election, which is the Edo State governorship election, I pray uh, the Lord continue to strengthen that person. That's the only way I pray. I can pray for the leaders. Personality per se it matters uh, a lot. Then they are manifesto. Uh, the life uh, they believe in the past. I believe the three, the three candidates are already proving themselves by coming, winning the primaries, showing that they have what it takes to win their party from their parties. But for the states, I think the situation of the country, for the now, we need a dynamic and someone that will say, that will do what he will say. The three candidates, I, I can say they are all capable and uh, uh, they are uh, where to do. And uh, But if, if I must choose one, I go for Aswe Godalo. Looking at uh, everything that the man um, has, so I believe that um, he can do it more than even the incumbent uh, governor. So because he can continue with what the, uh, the, uh, the foundation that um, Governor Obaseki has laid down. Others who extrayed the personalities of the three gubernatorial candidates commented on who they feel is most qualified to govern the state. Speaking on what it takes to win the gubernatorial race, the different respondents mentioned the qualities and traits the candidates must possess in order to move the state to a greater height. I feel the PDP candidate stands out amongst the three of them. Um, he's a very professional person. He has had experiences leading um multinational organizations and all of that so i believe that he stands out among the three i'm begging people in this stand please let us give a pdp one more chance for this edo state then we do more i have it in my mind to me i suggest that apc will now go for the will take over edo state which is the senator monday i think he can do well he can he knows what to do and he also knows what to take so my own opinion they are all of them they are they are okay they are fine uh each of them has a, a very good credibility uh but it will depend on the credibility of each of them and how much they are able to convince the the population of the state where well, the three of them they are okay they are good but it's the will of the people and you know let the will of god be done the one that God said we rule us, that's the one that will come. Respondents share the belief that a gubernatorial candidate's credibility can be assessed from their personality, past track records, and manifesto. Set OPI4, reporting for BTV News. Like the saying goes, education is the most powerful weapon which one can use to change the world. It helps people become better citizens, gets a better paid job, shows the difference between good and bad. Education shows us the importance of hard work and at the same time help us grow and develop. But does this still hold water in contemporary Nigerian society? Our correspondent went on the streets of Benin to get Respondent's View. The report. Education means studying in order to obtain a deeper knowledge and understanding of a variety of subjects to be applied to daily life. Education is not limited to just knowledge from books, but can also be obtained through practical experiences outside of the classroom. However, due to the current situation of the country and the unfair playing ground for graduates, some respondents were of the opinion that the gains of education that ought to be enjoyed by literates have now been hijacked by those engaged in fraudulent activities. I don't think education is the best thing to gain now because nowadays you see children making money from 12, 13, 14, 15. You see them driving good cars, having big houses, but later they can go to school. But I don't believe that education, if you want to acquire education, maybe because of reading, acquire knowledge, but when we talk of uh, financial status or having wealth. I don't think education matters now.
Others who spoke with the BTV news crew revealed that education is pivotal to success and opens doors to opportunities that cannot be accessed by the illiterate, debunking the contemporary belief that education is a scam. They noted that although many feel there are not many financial gains to be obtained by graduates or literate individuals, owing to the state of contemporary Nigerian society, education refines the mind of an individual and is a ladder to think out of the box and create opportunities for oneself. Without education, in Nigeria today, you are nowhere to be found. If you are not learned, you are nothing. You are just like, let me say, a non-entity. When you are educated, if you can read and write, from there you know where you are going, you know where you are coming from. The educated man has more access to the illiterate. Because there is no comparison between an educated man and that of an illiterate. You can see, even if the, the illiterate happen to have an opportunity, but the way we use it, we, be, we, we misuse it. Unlike when you are educated, you know you, have, you are focused, you know what to you plan, you know what to do and now how to utilize it. The opportunities I've had in life today is as a result of education. Uh, personally, um, I would say that uh, I've not arrived yet, but I'm better than my parents because, you know, I am more educated and more pleased than themselves. And I've got to, because of education, meet a lot of people who matters. These doors are not just what I just opened by sitting on the roadside or maybe, um, you know, doing any other thing and wishing away education. Then coming to the, uh, the benefits of education. Those guys or those people who are engaging in one venture or the other, just to ridicule education, you cannot take away the place of education in a man's life. The, the, the way the person talks, the comportment, you see some people, they are very rich. Yes, you are rich, but when you hear them talk, you say, ah, no, you need to get to the four walls of the university. And to some extent, they may be right. The reason is that because of the system of our country, we are living in a country where the system is not working. But in an advanced climb, education opens doors. Not only doors, it opens financial doors. Understand? So, me myself, to that extent, I believe that education uh, does not open financial doors, they may think. But if you actually want to make genuine money, you want to experience genuine financial open doors, education is one of the things that can give it to you. Education is a foundation for the development and progress of any society. It is a base upon which the whole building of human development stands. Oluwatoi Uyedola reporting for BTV News. Body shaming is a very rampant practice in the Nigerian society and even communities of the world. The media as well as diverse societies have given a static judgment of what beauty entails. Persons who do not fit into these beauty measurements are regarded as less beautiful and are often mocked. Nigerians whose opinions were captured in the course of this report all judge as something that should not be encouraged. Faithful Okpokam gives us more details. Societies with different cultures uphold different standards of measuring beauty. Some cultures in Nigeria view thick and endowed ladies as more beautiful than their slim counterparts. For certain careers such as modeling, the army and many more, height and weight are major considerations. Persons who do not fit into this criteria have been labeled as less beautiful or not very equipped to take on some career paths. A respondent expressly condemned the act of body shaming, terming it as wrong. He also encouraged persons who are subjects of body shaming to pay a deaf ear to derogatory words. A female respondent laid much emphasis on confidence and attaining value. She stated that irrespective of one's height or weight, one must hold on to positivity and optimism. It is very, very wrong. Regardless of the person's shape, person's height, person's stability, to body, shape anybody at all, it is very wrong. My reasons are not far-fetched. They say God, God made, created every one of us in his own image and likeness. For to body shape anybody, for me, it is like uh, an indirect way of telling God he doesn't know what he has done. If I've been a victim, I know it's not an easy thing to do, but just try as much as possible, but help yourself. If you keep padding over it, your spirit will be down. 
for you not to have so say, Lord, don't, don't listen to what people are saying about you. Just have that confidence that what others can do, you can also be able to do it. Don't, don't, don't lower yourself down. If you degrade yourself, people will degrade you. So even if you are big or you are tall, even if with that, who say, who wants to marry you, you can still marry you, irrespective of your age, your height, or if you are handsome or beautiful. Other respondents stated that as long as man was created in the image of God, everyone should appreciate the features they have and should not feel less of themselves. They encouraged persons with disabilities to not mind their supposed status in the society, but instead be thankful for life. God made people in his own way. So in any way you are made, you just appreciate God for it. Whether you are tall or you are short, you appreciate. If you are tall, you have an advantage. If you are also short, you have an advantage. You cannot be shorter than me and also be taller than me at the same time. Nothing to say about it. At least you should be appreciated. You should thank God. So the way God created you. So there's nothing to worry about. So the way you see yourself, uh -huh, you take it like that. Uh -huh. Before God created you, uh -huh, he know why he created you like that. If you say people are looking at me, I'm lifting on one leg, I'm, 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 um, I have a one eyes, one this and that. What of the life you are living? They said life. If you have life, there are more hope, more hope, isn't it? Beauty, they say, is in the eyes of the beholder. Certainly, the concept of beauty is one subject to individual judgment. But the shaming should therefore be done away with as it does more harm than good. Faithful Wokam reports it for BTV News. You are still watching BTV Major News at 6. We have more stories coming your way after this short break. <laughs> Authentic, no be my mind. Original, no be fake. Quality paint you. EDS for quality paint you. Na EDS for quality paint you. Na EDS for emotion. Super satin, super matto. Gravitas paint today. Texture paint today. And the high quality emotion now for EDS. You don't go for the ah. Now for EDS. EDS Quality Paints, Kilometer 12, Bidin Supply Road by Ogege Quarters, Bidin City. Or our branch office, 68 Supply Road, opposite former Edo State Library, now ShopRite. Contact us today on 090-5320-6873. EDS Quality Paints, keeping your goals live. Yes. Welcome back. Nigeria is now the first African country to adopt International Sustainability Standards Board Roadmap on Sustainability Reporting Standards aimed at unlocking capital investments, transforming business models, and safeguarding the environment in the country. The launch and adoption took place at the Nigerian stock market in Marina, Lagos. BTV News' Regina Ojomo has details of this and more on the business desk. The unveiling and adoption of the Roadmap for Sustainability reporting in Nigeria, geared towards strengthening corporate reporting in the country by the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, in partnership with the International Sustainability Standard Board, was led by Chairperson Mr. Emmanuel Fiba. Nigerians pride itself as a giant of Africa as it takes the leadership mantle in January in the journey of sustainability reporting. They say the adoption of the Roadmap for Sustainability will unlock capital investment derived growth, foster transparency, promote inclusivity, and facilitate the decarbonization of national economy. As part of the ongoing effort to cushion the effect of oil subsidy removal, the federal government has mapped out strategies aimed at establishing 1,000 compressed natural gas centers, CNG, before the end of the year across the country. The head media of the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative, PCNGI, Ms. Tyro Fashepe, made this known in Abuja at a joint press conference on the forthcoming Climate Action African Forum, SCAF 2024. Team Green Economics, Brighter Future. Innovative and investing in African climate, smart development is set to hold in Lagos between 17th to 19th of this year. She disclosed that 31 CNG centred spread have been put in place in Lagos, Abuja, Ibadan. Added that by May 29th, the centre would be increased to 45 centres, calling on vehicles owners to brave the option of converting their cars to CNG at a cost ranging of 300,000 to 500,000 error. 
The supply of United States dollar dipped by 30.7% to close at 199.71 million US dollars on Friday at the foreign exchange market despite the continued Nigeria appreciation drive. FMDQ data showed that US transitions turnover was depleted by 82.76 million US dollars on Friday compared to 288.47 million dollars recorded the previous day. Despite the drop on FX supply, Naira recorded a slight gain to close at 1,431,049 per US dollars. At the official market compared to 1,453 Naira 28 the previous day. Similarly, at the parallel market, the Naira traded at 1,460 Naira per USD on Friday from 1,470 on Tuesday. According to the leading financial analyst, managing director, chief executive officer of financial derivative company limited, Bismik Rewan. The Naira gained at least 28% in three weeks. Regina Ujoma reporting for BTV News. Now let's join Rebecca Goffey as she brings us up to speed with updates from around the world. At least 115 people died and over 140 were injured in a concert venue attack on the outskirts of Moscow, according to Russia. Gunmen opened fire during the event, causing chaos as people tried to escape. Russian President Vladimir Putin stated that all attackers have been captured, with some attempting to flee to Ukraine. Putin condemned the incident as a barbaric terrorist attack and declared a national day of mourning for March 24th. Moscow residents are donating blood for the injured and tributes have been left at the scene. The U.S. suggested the Islamic State group may be involved, though Russia has not commented on the claim. Philippine Lazzarini, head of UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, says a food convoy was denied entry to northern Gaza for the second time this week. He emphasized the urgency of delivering aid to combat spreading starvation, urging Israeli authorities to allow food aid at scale, whereas UN Secretary General Gotez described the blocked relief trucks on Egypt's side of the Gaza border as a moral outage. He calls for Israel to ensure unfettered access for humanitarian goods across Gaza and advocates for the release of Israeli captives held in Gaza. Gotez pledges continued collaboration with Egypt to improve aid flow into Gaza. Hezbollah announced that its fighters have launched attacks on Israeli military sites. They targeted ramming barks near the Lebanon-Israel border with artillery shells and attacked two air defense platforms at the Kefa Lam military site in northern Israel. Additionally, they conducted an attack on a radar site in Chiba farms in the occupied Golan Heights. The military wing of Islamic Jihad, our Quds Brigade, stated that its fighters disabled a house rigged with explosives by the Israeli army near Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza City. They aim to repurpose these explosives against Israeli soldiers and vehicles. Israeli troops have been conducting a large scale operation in and around the hospital since Monday. And that's it on the Global News segment for tonight. Thanks very much for watching. I am Rebecca Goffey. For more on entertainment, let's join our correspondent. Aria Star, the Nigerian singer and songwriter, recently expressed her fervent beliefs that Afrobeat stand as the most paramount jury globally. During an interview, the disability artist passionately asserted that Afrobeat, a jury that has gained widespread acclaim both within and beyond the African continent holds profound significance for her. She attributed her deep connection to the jury to her upbringing, stating that Afrobeat resonates with her on a personal level. Grateful for her role in bringing Afrobeat to a broader audience, Arista acknowledged her privilege in being among the forefront musicians championing the genre's reach. When questioned about a preferred Afrobeat artist, Arista revealed her administration for Rema and Bonaboy alongside a pen chart for her own music and other popular Afrobeat tracks. A number of West African musicians have attracted international attention in recent years, contributing to the growth of the continent's music scene. Nigerian musicians Bonaboy, Davido, and Whiskey stand out as the most well-known artists in West Africa, according to a recent rating from Congo to Global, a platform which celebrates and promotes Pan-African history and African pop culture. Bonaboy, whose real name is Damini Ogulu, has cemented his status as one of Africa's biggest music experts with his unique blend of Afrobeats, dance hall, and reggae influences, Bonaboy has captivated audiences worldwide. David Doe, born Davy Adeleke, is another powerhouse in the West African music scene. As one of Nigeria's most successful artists, 
David Doe has consistently delivered hit songs and sold at concerts both at home and abroad. Whiskey, whose real name is Ayodeji Ibrahim Balogun, is often referred to as Nigeria's biggest music export with its smooth vocals and jury defined sound. Whiskey has become a household name not only in Africa but also in the global music industry. South African singer and songwriter Tyler releases a self-titled debut album on Friday, fresh off a win at the Grammy Awards last month. The 22-year-old found success last year, reaching the top 10 on the US Billboard's Hot 100 chart and top 5 in Britain with Ama Piano hit Water, a jury-fusing house, jazz and log that emerged in South Africa. She described the 15-track Tyler which features collaborations with the likes of US rapper Travis Scott and Nigerian singer Thames as a melting pot of all influences she had growing up. Last month, Tyler won the inaugural Best African Music Performance Award at the Grammys, the music industry's top honors. And that's it on Entertainment Tonight, Gifts Uwagbo reporting for BTV News. Now let's shift gears now to the world of sports. All right, apologies for that. Um, with that, we've come to the end of our news bulletin for tonight. My name is Oluwatoin Oyedola. From here, it's a good night. Thank <music> you.